Hello there, uh, everyone. Uh, here's uh, part two of my uh, Mad Max, why I say it's a masterpiece of the action movie genre. So, uh, anyway, uh, before I talk about the exciting um, climactic chase slash fight scene, which is a huge reason why I say this movie is a masterpiece of the action movie genre, along with all the other reasons I stated in both the review and the previous video, one thing I forgot to mention, which I probably should have shown you a good visual representation of, is uh, Immortan Joe's wives. That is Immortan Joe's wives, who I am talking about. The ones who uh, basically help kickstart the plot when Furiosa tries to uh, take them away from, uh, from Immortan Joe to take them somewhere else safe. And uh, Max and Furiosa, I also forgot to mention, were joined by one of Immortan Joe's former followers named Nux who delivers probably one of the best lines in the film that I always quote. <laughs> what a great day! What a lovely day! But, uh, yeah, anyway, um, frickin', yeah, that's who joins them, and he helps them out once he joins Max and the wives. But anyway, uh, Furiosa meets up with, uh, with, uh, this gang of female bikers with guns who don't like Immortan Joe and want to find somewhere nice to live. And, uh, and I like how there's this one scene where Furiosa has told what happened to her family, and she just, she just breaks down, and there's a real awesome shot of her just crying, looking up at the sky, and <laughs> letting out all her emotions, and I really like how this movie proves it has heart, and it has great character development. And another thing, too, which I thought I'd mention, to all of you who say that this movie has no plot, you are totally wrong. This movie utilizes visual storytelling. You gotta put the plot together with your own mind at certain points. And the movie does have an actual plot. It's just that it's a very simple plot. The plot of this movie is like plots of action movies from the Golden Age. Mostly relatively simple and not much to it. Because when you think about it, the plot of this movie is pretty much just an escort mission from point A to point B. That's really what it is. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, here is some music that was played during the climax of this film, which is just an all-out fight between Immortan Joe, his followers, and Max Furiosa, and the female biker gang that I mentioned. Anyway, here is some uh, of the music that was played. I'm just going to let this continue to play while I discuss certain parts of this climax that are just so great. As you can tell, the music is one of the parts, but the fight and just the chase, it's really fast paced and uh, it's just keeps you on the edge of your seat. And you are behind Max and uh, Furiosa and all of them to defeat Immortan Joe. And the way Immortan Joe is defeated is just so, it's just poetic justice. It's only right. What happens is when Furiosa frickin' just grabs that little face mask of his, attaches it to a chain, throws it on the wheels of one of his vehicles, and the wheel basically just rips his mask off. And I'm assuming that mask was how he how he used had to breathe. Like that was his breathing mask, so that pretty much just cut off all oxygen to his body. And um Another thing, too, that was really cool about this climax is Max is getting into a fight with one of my favorite action movie tropes, even though it is used a lot. He's fighting one of his henchmen, who is overall bigger than Max, and Max is all, he's like smaller, like, like this, and him and Max are just fighting, and he's all just trying to jack him up, and he has this little, like, flamethrower on his back, and there's this real awesome shot where Max just grabs the flamethrower, hits him on the head with it a bunch of times, and uh, it doesn't kill him, but boy, does it subdue him for quite a while. And this music here, it only escalates as the action goes down. And, uh, yeah, frickin', it just is so good. And just listen to it. And then another point, too, is when Nux, who I previously mentioned, does something which I wasn't expecting, but boy, when it happened, it was really shocking. Nux is basically driving the war rig that Furiosa was in, and as the wives and Furiosa and Max get in a Morton Joe's vehicle, the henchman I previously mentioned that Max was fighting, 
he basically damages the engine because Nux was going to put it in like neutral or whatever and throttle and rejoin the wives and everyone. And this is the music that plays when Nux realizes there's no way of getting out of this alive. So he basically says, witness me to one of the wives who uh, began to fall in love with them, played by Elvis Presley's granddaughter, fun fact. And uh, this is when he realizes he has to sacrifice himself and he says, witness me. And there's this canyon and he basically just crashes it into the canyon. He like turns the vehicle over and all of the Morton Joe's men, they just crash into each other and Morton Joe's army is overall just beaten. And uh, here's the track of music from the end of the film. As, uh, as a oh, and twist in the plot that I forgot to tell you that makes this not a traditional escort mission is Max and Furiosa and the biker gang realize that if they keep moving forward where they're going, there's just going to be nothing but uh, but just dirt and really just nothing to find. So they realize that where you're safe is your home, where you feel safe. Which is why they turn around and decide to go back to a Morton Joe Citadel, which is where his headquarters were. And one thing I forgot to mention, he's hoarding all the water from... Uh, the people of the society and that's why he's worshipped as a god because that's what gives him everything and this is when Max, Furiosa and uh, and all of them are uh, are just going back and they're hailed as a hero and this is the track called Let Them Up by Tom Hulkenberg Junkie XL who will be given credit and uh, I gotta tell you this right now, Mr. Hulkenberg, Junkie XL, George Miller, Tom Hardy, Charlize Theron, everyone involved with this film, you truly made an action movie landmark. This is a milestone. This is an action film that I can already tell has changed action movies forever. And uh, I gotta say, when I watched Jason Bourne, which I reviewed, I could tell that the movie was filmed in a way similar to this as I discussed in the other video, limiting the visual effects and everything. And uh, this soundtrack was just a work of art. And here's the last piece of music and my cue to end this video. I hope you love these two videos and look forward to more videos like this one. Like if you like, comment, and subscribe for some more awesome content. Peace.